The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe show. Join host Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they serve up the hottest photography news and commentary. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 203. I'm Joseph Christina. On last show, we discussed my results from using the Sony A7S II with Canon and Tamarin glass, and we asked the question, is this combination ready for professional use? If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at digitalphotographycafe.com or our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash dphotocafe. Listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox Music apps, or subscribe through iTunes or RSS. So, I am here, guys. It is another week, and where's Trevor? There is no Trevor. What's going on? So, yeah, as you guessed, I'm flying solo today. Um, Trevor's working. He's like a busy little beaver. Um, he's like the uh, three-legged cat in a sandbox. He's got a lot of work that he's doing, and he just didn't have time this week to, to join me. So, um, hopefully, he'll be back next week. So, like I said, I'm riding solo. Bear with me. Um, hopefully I can pull it together for you guys. So, um, anyways, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, in the industry, uh, this week. Um, we have a show that's going on in Japan, which is really quite big. Um, there's a lot of news on cameras and gears and stuff that's, uh, been coming out, a lot of rumors. So I kind of want to just give you a little bit of news and a little bit of rumors today. It's almost like the rumor mill. It feels like there's a lot of stuff that's kind of going on. So let's start out with Corbis. Corbis was sold by a guy that I'm sure some of you know of. He made an operating system that some of you use, some of you don't, and uh, Xbox and a few other things. So, yeah, Bill Gates. So, Bill Gates sold the company Corbis, and um, he sold it to a company called VCG. And VCG stands for Visual China Group. He ended up selling it. VCG is actually the company that infused $13 million, I think it was, into 500 picks to basically bring them into China um, or to expand them um, into China. So some of you might know who VCG is, but now they own it. One of the sites that was in, I guess, the sale was a site called Dematix. So it's D-E-M-O-T-I-X.com. And it's the equivalent to, let's an iStock, let's say, like a Getty. And they sell more or they, let's call it lease or sell images that are more current, current events, more newsy type of thing. Uh, very current. And for some reason, when the folks that um, were part of this company or part of this site go to the site, it's no longer there, guys. It's now going immediately to Corbis's site. And their photographers are like, how do I get in? What do I do? Where's my account? Where's my money, people, right? Billy, where's my money? So they, he sells the company to Corbis, and now these, these people are basically out money, I guess. I don't know. So this is the, the gist of it. The question here is, or more of um, the point of the matter, is that you can't put all of your eggs in one basket, guys. And this happens all the time. We as photographers, we're very, let's call it anal when it comes to what we do. Let's say it's um, Lightroom. We use Lightroom. We light, use Lightroom only. It's the best thing since sliced bread and we use nothing else, right? We're, we stick with one thing and that's the same thing with our photos. We'll put them into one site and we stick them there all the time, no matter what that site is, maybe a, a selling site or maybe a site just for sharing, but we always use that one, right? We don't diversify, right? So we need to do that. You don't want to put all your images, all your eggs into one basket. Because at any time, that basket could just disappear. And then what do you have? If you basically started a company around a location or a website or a service, and now that service is gone, what are you going to do? So, and this happens all the time. Perfect example is Google, right, guys? How many of those apps have just disappeared? You just absolutely love this app. You use it every day for your business, and now it's gone. What do you do? And that happens all the time. They decide, well, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't see enough people using it. They don't care if you are using it for your business all the time. They'll just say, hey, you know, Mr. Jones, guess what? 90 days, that's how long we give you. After 90 days, sorry, you know, go get your data off. This is how you do it. And then do it, you know, do with it as you will. We're not supporting it anymore. So be careful with that. 
don't put all your images in one one place because you never know what's going to happen, especially in the cloud. Who knows? The cloud might burst sometime and now you have nothing. So be careful with that. Anyways, moving on. Sony, um, we know that Nikon and Canon last year had just recalls, you know, numerous problems, um, issues that they had to correct uh, and whatnot. And usually Sony has been pretty good. All of the news on Sony has all been just stellar news. Oh, look at this full frame camera. Here's, you know, the A7R2. Oh my goodness, 43 megapixel full frame mirrorless. Or here's the A7S2. Wow. So it's been a lot of positive stuff. Well, the they just released um, a service advisory, let's call it. Let's call it what it is. It's a recall for the RX1R2. Um, and what it is, it's light leaks. If under extreme lighting conditions, the camera leaks. That's just it. So, you know, at least they're stepping forward and saying there's a problem. So if you do have that RX1, R2, and you do have that problem, they're saying here's a list of serial numbers. So if you have serial numbers 6310198 through 6311127, guess what? You might have one of those defective cameras. They are allowing you to send it in for repair or replacement, whatever they need to do. And you can find that serial number right at the bottom of the camera. Very, very simple. But I'm gonna tell you one thing, guys. If there's a problem, don't wait on the serial number. Don't even bother looking at the serial number. If you have a light leak, I don't care what serial number it is, they're going to fix it. They know there's a problem. They might need to expand those serial numbers based on your one unit, who knows? Um, just a few months ago, I did a piece on something similar from a Canon, it was a Canon piece, and I had a 5D and the mirror launched off, and they ended up having a, um, a once again, the same type of thing, they had they, a recall. And I did a video, matter of fact, if you haven't followed me yet, I want you guys to do so. Go over to YouTube, type in J. Christina space photo, and you should see my new channel that I just put up. Um, on there is where I have that video, and I'm gonna put it um, a link probably right over here so you can go see that video. If you have a 5D, um, you take a look at that video. I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can get it fixed for free. Um, so go take a look at that. Same thing with this. If you have one of those uh, serial numbered cameras, definitely you're gonna wanna send it back. But even if you don't look at it because they're still going to fix it. So if you need the, if you need the number, guys, you don't wanna look it up. The number is one. 239-245-6360. Once again, it's 239-245-6360. Call Sony and they'll set up a time for you to go have it fixed. They're saying that this service recall, service inspection or whatever they want to call it, will go on until March 2018. So you have plenty of time to do it, but don't wait. You don't want problems with your camera. You don't want problems with image. You might have that perfect shot, then you end up with the light leak and you have just, you just ruin the shot. Don't don't play with that. Just have it fixed. Anyways, moving on. Canon. If you guys are Canon shooters and you're looking for glass, this might be the month for you to grab some. Um, Canon right now has a rebate going on all the way up to about, I think it's $150 off um, each lens. Um, some a little bit less, some a little bit more. All L glass, high quality L glass. So if you're looking for either a 16 to 35, a 17 40, a 24 to 70, or a 200, a 70 to 200, now is the time. Either F4 or 2.8, all that glass is currently, um, let's call it on sale or rebatable, <laughs> if that's a word. But the rebates, you do, um, rebate supply. And so you can go and go to Canon's website, canon.com, take a look at those lenses, and you're going to get rebates anywhere from 4 to approximately 10%. On a $1,500 lens, 10%, that's 150 bucks. That's a lot of money um, to take off of that quality L glass. So like I said, Canon shooters, take a look at some of that glass. If you're looking for it, it's a good time to take a look and buy right now. Anyways, moving on. Fuji. I really have always liked Fuji cameras. Really good stuff. Now, Fuji Film, they have been kind of the, the de facto lately. You know, Kodak kind of just went away and a lot of the companies are just no longer making film. Fuji's still doing it. Now, under by, let's say... Um, just recently, I think it was about last week, we heard a little rumor that said Fuji was going to continue making film for the next 15 to 18 years. That's pretty good, guys. That's pretty good. They're stating that as of 2000, the year 2000 was their highest sales in Fuji film. 
They see the decline slowly until now. Now we're 15 years later, 16 years later, it's slowly going this way. And what they're doing is, is their price is slowly going this way, right? They have to try to meet in the middle somehow. So that's what they're doing. So far in the last three years, they've had five price hikes of Fuji film. And once again, this month, 10% up on Fuji film. So if you want some Fuji film, get it, grab it, stick it in a cool environment someplace, hold on to it. Um, but the main part of the story here is they're gonna continue making it. For me, I think that's wonderful because if I'm going to teach someone photography, I don't care if it's digital or not, I always have them develop a roll of film. I don't care if it's 35 millimeter film guys or 120, whatever it is, develop a roll of film and print it. The look on people's face when they see that white sheet of paper begin, begin to get milky and then slowly resolve, slowly see that Christmas of the picture come up and you can, you, it's, it's magical. It's absolutely magical. Anyone that's only shot digital all their lives should develop and print a roll of film sometime in their lifetime. They will, they will either get a new love or appreciation for photography or they will get that first love, that bug that never leaves absolutely print, um, develop and print film. So seeing that they're going to be around making film for the next 15, 20 years, that's unbelievably awesome. That means we'll be able to continue to, to do it and in to, to enjoy it. Um, so anyways, kudos for Fuji to, to, you know, to keep going down that film line, but bear in mind, 10%, 10%, 10% in 10 years from now, Fuji film, a roll of film is going to be extremely expensive. Go hoard some, stick it someplace, you'll sell it. You'll be making 10% maybe or 20% a year on it. <laughs> There's a lot more to come, a lot more rumors to come. But before we go any further, we're going to take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. The 3-in-1 Photo Reference Tool is a versatile, all-in-one color reference accessory designed to help you dial in white balance, exposure, and color temperature. With its 37 anti-reflective color reference tiles, both photographer and videographer can take complete control over their color workflow. The front side features 19 color tiles. The large 18% gray card with center target makes autofocus lockup easy while providing fast in-camera custom white balance and single-click color correction in post-production. The six-step exposure gradient provides perfect tonal reproduction, balancing highlights with deep, rich blacks in every image. Its 12 tiles of primary, processed, and standard skin tone colors are perfect for digital reference. On the back side of the 3-in-1 photo reference tool, you will find 18 custom tiles. Six-step exposure gradient, including an 18% gray tile, perfect for dialing in exposure and neutralizing color temperature in post-production. And finally, perfect for the portrait photographer, a unique 12-step gradient unlike any other color reference tool, allowing warming, cooling, and neutralizing color with a single click. From in-camera to post-production, the 3-in-1 Photo Reference Tool helps push your creativity to the next level, providing complete color control over all your imaging creations. Grab one today from your local camera dealer or visit our website at jchristina.com. So, right, guys, we are back. So, rumor mill, right? Rumor mill. Well, there was some breaking image breaking news and breaking image, let's say, for the first, a first shot, a real world shot of the new Olympus Pen F is the name of the camera. Interesting camera, extremely retro. I love retro cameras and I really like Olympus. But really what gets me here is the specs. They're saying that it should, we should see it about the 27th of this month. So if all goes well, this is probably the same release date of this um, video that you're watching right now. The thing here is they're doing a micro four thirds camera again. Now, Olympus Pen F, micro four thirds, 20 megapixels, like on, on high mode, let's call it high resolution, up to 50 megapixels. Guys, we talked about this last week, week before. What are you gonna do with 50 megapixels on a sensor the size of your fingernail, right? Not much. I don't understand it. I don't know what they're doing or what they're thinking, right? Also, the, 
the quoted price is anywhere right around 1500 1700 euro basically around two grand right around two grand 1800 1900 us for a micro four thirds camera what the heck really i think there's better places that you guys could spend your money i don't know but it's really odd i i find it interesting but what's even more interesting is the next rumor and what that is is they found um, in the works, let's call it, a patent. Olympus has three patents out there. But listen to this, guys. Not for micro four-thirds stuff, but for a full-frame mirrorless lens. Three of them. Actually, four, right? A 35 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, a 20 millimeter, and a 28 millimeter. All between 1.4 and 2 right? That's amazing. Prime glass. Beautiful. What are they doing? You see that? Full frame. Full frame. If this is the case, guys, full frame, it's going back to what we were talking about before. This micro four thirds is going to be gone. Okay. APS-C is going to be the entry point, And then you're going to go into full frame mirrorless. That's where it's going to be. And DSLR are going to be gone. That's just what the prediction is. That's where I think that will what that will end up happening. So I find it very interesting because what this means is you have Sony who is just head and shoulders above Canon, Nikon, anyone else in the market in this in in mirrorless, right? Full frame mirrorless to the point. And now seeing that Olympus might be doing it also and becoming a player, wow. That really means a lot. That really means a lot. They're throwing their hat into the ring and saying, we're here, we're in. Now, does this mean absolutely that they're going to come out with a mirrorless full frame camera? I'm, you can't say absolutely. But if you're going to put out patents or, or file for patents for full frame glass, um, good glass with specs and schematics, all right, you know there's going to be a camera out shortly or at least they're working on it. So that's that's awesome. Kudos to um, Olympus. I really like Olympus camera, and I like their retro looks. I like the way it is. But the but the two grand on a micro four thirds is definitely places you can find a smaller camera from Sony, from um, Fuji, and other places that are cheaper that will do the same type of job. Back to mirrorless and full frame. Now, last time we spoke, we talked about how I predicted that 2017. Um, will be the time when um, Canon will be putting out a full-frame mirrorless camera. Nikon, I was predicting sometime this year, 2016. I might end up being, I, I might end up eating my hat here, guys. I don't know. Rumor has it, okay, that at CP Plus, now if you guys don't know what CP Plus is, basically CP Plus stands for Camera and Photo Imaging Show. And they're based in Japan. It's the equivalent to, let's call it Photokina in Germany, or the US, um, let's say, Photo Plus Expo that happens in New York City every year. Well, the thing here is they're saying that they're going to be introducing something mirrorless, and the quote from them is, um, will surprise a lot of people. Now, I don't know about you guys, an APS-C um, sensor, let's say a new Canon M series APS-C sensor, that is not a surprise to anyone. That'd be more of the same. So I think that there's more of a likelihood that there'll be some type of um, push towards full frame or something along those lines. I'm hoping, right? I'm hoping. Now, we know, guys, that they have been behind the eight ball now for quite some time. I would say a few years now. It's not even a short period of time. Nikon has surpassed them, in my personal opinion, especially on autofocus on a lot of different levels. And bear in mind, I'm a Canon shooter forever. Um, also, Sony is head and shoulders above everyone. They've completely surpassed the entire market, right, um, in mirrorless, in full-frame mirrorless, period. They are the de facto full-frame mirrorless camera um, company, let's call it. So the rumblings in, camera, in, in Canon confirm that, listen, we are not happy playing this catch-up thing. And this is what I was talking to you guys about last week. Canon is, they're, they're, they're playing catch up. They are not able to grab onto this emerging segment. Mirrorless full frame is huge. Mirrorless in itself is huge, but mirrorless full frame, I think, is where it's at. That's where professionals will be. DSLR will go the way of the dinosaur, period, end of story. 
So that, that those rumblings in Cannon's um, camp that listen, we're not doing this right. We need to get we need to get on board here. We need to put out a mirrorless full frame camera and start competing again, right? And stop doing the same old, same old over and over and over, right? Digix six, Digix seven, big freaking deal. Do something innovative and not something that's just old hat. That's just more of the same. So what's going to happen? We don't know, but I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open and I want you guys to um, do the same because if you guys are interested in the mirrorless uh, market as I am, as I'm sure you can tell, I think it's a it's definitely the way of the future. And if Canon and some of these players can get into it and compete with Sony, what that's gonna what that means is we're gonna have better and better cameras. This will probably be that war that happens. The mirrorless full frame war will be will ensue. It's gonna be Canon full frame mirrorless, Sony full frame full frame mirrorless, Nikon, and now possibly Olympus. So very, very cool stuff. This, this is like major, major news in the industry. This segment is opening up and it's opening up in such a way that's going to benefit us, not necessarily the manufacturers because they are going to have to start producing quality stuff because they're going to be competing for our dollars. And the one that gets it right is going to be that winner. The one that gets us to buy their lenses is going to be the winner. And right now, Sony is doing it. And Canon knows that it's very hard to lose control of that space and then get it back. Very, very difficult. You need to gain control of the space and then keep it. And how you keep it is get people to buy your lenses. If they don't buy their lenses, yeah, they're going to migrate. They're going to move on to other places, to other manufacturers. When you get people to buy your lenses, they're married, right? They're married to that company. This is very hard to go and sell all your glass and go and move to another manufacturer. Very, very difficult. So, and people usually don't do it. So anyways, that's really about it, guys. There's a lot of, a lot of rumor stuff. I think it's kind of fun. I always like looking at that kind of stuff instead of all of the hard facts on on specs and what's going on because that's kind of what's happening and what's going to happen and what could happen in the near future. So if once again, as I said earlier, if you haven't followed me on my new channel um, over there on YouTube, I want you to go and search for J. Christina Photo. J. Christina Photo. Take a look at some of my videos over there. Matter of fact, um, like I was saying, that Canon video is over there. The new one that I did with the Sony Alpha, the A7S II, um, um, look at the Tamarin and Canon glass on that um, camera as well as native glass. I think it came out as a really good video, good information and real world information, not just me talking. Actually, you'll see um, how the product works or doesn't work. Um, definitely, like I said, go take a look. Go to youtube.com and search for J. Christina Photo. Please subscribe if you can. Really would appreciate that and give me a thumbs up. So, all right, guys, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Twitter at Joseph Christina. And once again, like I said, Christina with no H. So yet another week has come and gone. Don't forget to follow Digital Photography Cafe on YouTube. That's youtube.com forward slash DPhoto Cafe. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here and I'll see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Subscribe to our YouTube channel with any compatible device by visiting youtube.com forward slash DPhoto Cafe. Be sure to subscribe to our audio feed through iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox Music apps or through RSS. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.